Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're getting a little bit nostalgic. And one of the things people are really nostalgic for is the age of the battleship. So a very common question I get asked is what would a modernized Iowa class battleship look like? What sort of changes would be made to the ship, which was de decommissioned in 1991, to bring her up to date for the present day. So uh, this video is a couple of my ideas on what that modernization would look like. Bear in mind, I'm far more familiar with World War II era technology than the near contemporary stuff of the uh, late 90s and 2000s. But uh, I've also prepared a ship bucket scale drawing of what I think this would look like. And I'll also be gesturing to some things at the model of the ship here. This is how the ship looked uh, more or less upon reactivation in 1982. Uh, we're also going to briefly look at a Navy document that talks about the changes that the Navy planned on making. But first, here's a word from our sponsors, Magic Spoon, that helps us with our nostalgia. One of the things that I get nostalgic for besides battleships is Saturday morning cereal and cartoons. Do you guys remember watching G.I. Joe every Saturday morning? My favorite episode was Sink the Montana. And uh, my favorite G.I. Joe, of course, was Shipwreck. A brand that gives us nostalgia is Magic Spoon. They've created a breakfast cereal that makes me feel like a kid again, but has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein per serving, and four to five net grams of carbs. Only 140 calories in each serving, and it's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free, so it fits a variety of diets. They come in a variety of flavors. Uh, my favorite is the cocoa flavor. I've almost killed off this box. I wouldn't be able to walk around a nearly 900-foot battleship all day without a good breakfast. And Magic Spoon delivers the great taste you love with more protein and less sugar. Start your new year off right with Magic Spoon. Click the link below to grab a variety pack of Magic Spoon cereal and try it today. Be sure to use the promo code BATTLESHIP at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or go to magicspoon.com battleship. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you your money, no question asked. So click the link below and use the code BATTLESHIP for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash battleship. So, ever since the Iowas were decommissioned, a faction uh, within both the U.S. military, Congress, and uh, among common people like you and I who are enthusiasts of battleships, have advocated for bringing battleships back to active service. Now, obviously, it would be significantly cheaper to bring back an Iowa uh, than it would to build a whole new ship. So the Navy, shortly after the Iowa class being decommissioned, looked into what it would take to reactivate one. So uh, this was prepared in June of 1992, uh, right at the point when all the battleships are being decommissioned. This is specifically what it would take to bring New Jersey out of mothballs uh, around the turn of the millennia, 1999-2000. Um, so they went through, and look at the size of this. Uh, forgive me for having not read the whole thing yet, but it uh, goes into a lot of small things. Everything from uh, upgrades that need to be made to the ship's engineering to make them work more efficiently based on uh, comments that the crew had of old parts that were breaking and things like that, all the way down to habitability things like there were not enough coat hangers in the ship's bathrooms for modern sailors to hang their towels and their clothes on. Uh, there weren't enough showers on board for the number of sailors in each berthing space. Uh, other things like that, that uh, where the modern Navy is increasing its habitability, uh, where this older style of ship simply didn't match. Uh, as far as I have found so far, it does not go even go into um, mixed gender crews, which are starting 
to come into the Navy at this time and by the year 2000 are more or less uh, everywhere. Uh, by now, we have mixed gender crews on everything, including submarines. So undoubtedly, were the Navy to reevaluate this in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, they would have come up with even more changes that needed to be done. Uh, and so for my handful of things I'm going to mention today, we're really going to limit ourselves. We don't want to look at things like uh, somehow rearming the whole ship with reactive armor. We don't want to look at regunning the whole ship with rail guns, uh, which is a technology that hasn't even been fully fleshed out yet. We don't want to talk about uh, re-engineering the ship with nuclear power. Like we're, we're going to go with more or less the key things that are here so that we can keep this cost down. Because if you're going to spend that much money, you might as well just build a new ship instead of reactivating something 80 years old. So uh, first off, let's consider the job of the battleship in the modern Navy and focus our efforts on that. The thing that battleships do that other ships do not do, that no other ship built has ever been able to do as well, is shore bombardment. So supporting amphibious operations, those sorts of things, which is the whole reason why you want these 16-inch guns around. So we're going to focus primarily on uh, how this ship can be providing better shore bombardment support. Uh, next up, it is the most powerful surface combatant in the world. So we'll look at some things that it can improve uh, that sort of thing, surface combat power. Uh, and finally, I want to address the biggest weakness of these ships in the 80s and 90s, which is their anti-aircraft capabilities. Uh, so those are the three points that we're going to focus our changes on. So first off, the 1982 modernization of New Jersey was uh, pretty much the, the cheapest thing the Navy could do to bring the ship up to modern standards. Uh, and so this ship ended up with an electronic suite significantly less uh, than other capital ships of this size, which would be the uh, marine amphibious carriers and uh, the nuclear aircraft carriers. Uh, so th those two types of ships are the same size as battleships or larger. And uh, the Iowas just don't have the same sort of electronics or uh, other suites. So the first thing I would do is add a Mark 48 3D air search radar. Uh, and I would do that on the main mast. I would retain the Mark 49 because most of our Nimitz class carriers and uh, LPHs and whatnot have both. So I would build a second lattice type tripod mast around the aft funnel. And that would make room for a lot of the new electronics that we're adding. One of the habitual issues of the Iowa class battleships is they did not have enough room for all the electronics that were being added year over year over year. It's why you end up with things like the disc, uh, disc cone cage antenna all the way at the bow of the ship. So adding that extra mass there, I think would be uh, important. We put the 49 that's on the main mast right now down on that. We put some other things uh, on that, maybe the drone control radar that was uh, once on the forward end of the smokestack, uh, maybe some other things like that. The problem is, that's adding a lot of weight. We need to both reduce that top weight and preferably reduce the manpower requirements of these ships because in an all-volunteer military, it is really expensive to put a full crew on one of these. So we're going to get rid of all six of the 5-inch 38 caliber guns. In the 1980s, this gun was still common in the U.S. Navy, in our inventory of spare parts, and in our allies overseas. Nowadays, uh, this 1930s designed weapon is uh, pretty well antiquated. So we're going to replace all six of those twin mounts with uh, four single mount 5-inch 62s, which is what you see on the Arleigh Burke destroyers and other things like that. The 5-inch gun uh, helps against small boats. The 16-inch guns just can't rotate and fire fast enough to track most small boats. So a couple of those on here, and we're going to put them in the lower two positions and just delete that upper position entirely. Uh, putting a couple of those on here retains that capability with a more modern system, uh, and it's going to reduce approximately 80 crew members per gun mount that it takes to uh, aim those guns, to load those guns manually. Um, and so 
we're really saving on weight of these armored mounts for the new fiberglass ones, and we're saving on the manpower. And reducing manpower also reduces weight because we no longer need as much food or uh, any of those other things, bedding, everything. Now that we've removed the five inch guns, we can also remove the five inch 38 directors, the Mark 37s, so we got four of those around. And those are gonna create points where we can add either new range finders for the new guns that we're adding, or uh, new anti-aircraft weapon systems. The Iowa class battleships entire close in weapon system suite of the 1980s is the four phalanx Gatling guns. Uh, that is not much. They can only engage targets within two miles. And at that range, a supersonic or God forbid modern hypersonic missile uh, is gonna close very, very rapidly. A mount might be able to take down one or two of those projectiles. But if more than that are fired, we're in serious trouble. So I'm just gonna remove two of these entirely. I'm gonna replace them with rolling airframe missiles, which is the more modern equivalent. And this is a close-in weapon system that is missile to missile as opposed to gun to missile. Uh, so much like the modern carriers, we'll have two phalanxes and two rams on board. And uh, I'm gonna add an intermediate level of defense and that is gonna be provided by the Sea Sparrow. A pair of uh, octuple Sea Sparrow launchers here where these uh, after phalanxes are, are gonna give us an intermediate anti-aircraft defense. They looked at putting those on the battleships in the 1980s, but found that the concussion from the main guns was too close to the positions where they were planned on installing those and was gonna damage the missile. So they ended up just leaving it out of the package entirely. Um, but if we put it amidships there, it should be survivable. And it's got pretty good arcs of fire from that location. So we've rearranged our anti-aircraft and we've now got medium in addition to close range anti-aircraft defense. You know what? I also want long range anti-aircraft defense. And what in the modern Navy provides that? The SM-2 missile. This can both be used for anti-surface ships and anti-air. So the standard missile, SM-2, uh, could also replace the Tomahawk cruise missiles that were carried as our long range anti-ship weapons, which the modern Navy no longer uses. Uh, so that's killing two birds with one stone. The problem is that needs vertical launch tubes. I really didn't want to redesign the entire superstructure of these ships to accommodate vertical launch tubes. Uh, however, the armored box launchers that they got as a stopgap measure in the 80s uh, are no longer used anywhere in the world. Uh, so they're, they're out of the inventory. If we want to retain the shore bombardment capabilities of the Tomahawk cruise missiles, if we want to increase the anti-aircraft capabilities, we got to add vertical launch tubes. The good news is there's probably going to be more room for it than even on a Ticonderoga class cruiser. The bad news is the deck penetration of these things is uh, close to th three or four stories. So we've got three stories of superstructure here, and we just have to gut all of it all the way down, and we probably have to build a raised section on top of where the armored box launchers are uh, just to get a, an extra fourth story there. But that's going to double or triple our Tomahawk missile capabilities, depending on how many cells uh, the Navy decides to cram in there. So we've increased our long range shore bombardment through the missiles. That's great. Next, we want to increase our shore bombardment capabilities with the main battery guns. As of now, as far as I know, there is no more powder or shells in the inventory for these guns, which means if these ships are reactivated, you have to build all new shells. And that is a good thing. The US Navy continued to use 1940s manufactured powder and shells for these ships throughout the 1990s and kept them in the inventory up to about 2012. In the 80s and 90s, the Navy looked at Sabo rounds that would have a longer range, but because we had so much other stuff and because it was an added expense, they never really developed that uh, any further. So there were some prototypes made, but they never really tested uh, 13 inch or 11 inch subcaliber munitions for these guns. We're going to do that. And that's going to give our guns a range of, I don't know, let's say we double the range, 40, 50 miles. E that, that should be easy. Uh, we might even be able to get the range up to 70 miles with modern uh, extended range munitions and those sorts of things like they were trying to develop for the Zumwalts, which were supposed to replace these ships. 
So we add that we've added all of the short bombardment firepower that is possible and far exceed anything else uh, in the inventory of any nation now for short bombardment support. What else do we need? We've just extended the range of the guns, but our Mark 38 fire control systems for the main battery guns only has a range of about 20 or 25 miles. Uh, so we're going to replace that with the more modern SPQ-9 surface search radar uh, and gunfire control radars that you see on uh, modern ships. And that should have additional range. The Navy was even looking at that uh, for the Iowas as part of the extended range munition program back in the 80s and 90s. So it's not a stretch uh, to take this sort of system that's already on the Ticonderoga cruisers, the Arleigh Burks, etc., cetera, uh, and drop it on the Iowa class battleship, especially now that we've added extra space for these antennas. Uh, and maybe we even retain one of the Mark 38s just as a backup. It's got an optical backup. It can be manually rotated. So even if you lose uh, the digital features of the modern radar, you've still got an analog backup. Uh, in addition to that fire control system, which can also take over for the new five inch guns that we've put on. Remember, we've deleted the Mark 37 directors. Uh, we're also going to need some other electronics for controlling the missiles. The Navy came up with a plan for this in the 80s called NTU, or New Threat Upgrade. Basically, they had the Aegis system coming online on the Ticonderogas and Arleigh Burks, but that was really expensive and nearly impossible to retrofit into the older anti-aircraft warfare ships, the older cruisers and destroyers already in the fleet. So they started uh, putting NTU on these ships, but then at the end of the Cold War, during all these drawdowns, they just uh, end the program. We're not going to try and retrofit Aegis onto this dinosaur of a design. Uh, so we're going to resurrect the NTU program, uh, which is basically a series of antennas and, and uh, systems that already exists in the Navy. And we're going to put it on here, and that's what's going to control our uh, new missile batteries like the SM-2 uh, and help with our long and intermediate range anti-aircraft and all of that sort of stuff. All right, so those are big picture my ideas for modernizing the ship. Uh, remember, on the back end of all of this, there's going to be a tremendous amount of redesign and reconfiguration of the inside of the ship. The entire midships and after superstructure basically has to be gutted, and everything that was there has to be relocated somewhere else because you now have vertical launch tubes there. Uh, all of these new systems require new electronics that are going to have to go in somewhere. I would uh, hope that the Navy would reconfigure the Combat Engagement Center on New Jersey to be more like uh, what Wisconsin has with a much larger space. Because uh, command and control is one thing that's kind of on the margin here. And also, I didn't talk about all of the habitability upgrades that almost certainly would have to go into the inside of the ship to make it uh, mixed gender habitable and to bring it up to the standards that modern sailors uh, expect and that the modern Navy goes by. So we are looking at a several billions of dollar uh, project per Iowa-class battleship. So with these changes, we have drastically increased the combat power of these ships for their primary role, shore bombardment, anti-ship warfare. We've increased their defensive capabilities with uh, more anti-missile and anti-aircraft, and we haven't lost anything added in the 80s. I haven't specifically talked about it, but we're going to retain the harpoons, uh, anti-ship missiles. We're going to maintain the aviation facilities on the fantail as well as the drone capabilities that this model does not depict, but that were added to the ship later on in the 80s. So we still have the ability to spot for these guns at the new long ranges that we've added. Uh, and at the end of this, while this would be an aged man of war, um, she would have the most combat capability ever in her career, thanks to the modern systems that are now available. What changes would you make did I miss anything important? Let us know in the comment section down below. Were any of the changes I made too pie in the sky, gutting the entire after superstructure or something like that? Uh, let me know your thoughts. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. We're especially thankful for the sponsors of today's video, Magic Spoon. Click the link below to grab a variety pack of Magic Spoon cereal and try it today. Be sure to use the promo code BATTLESHIP on checkout to get $5 off any order or go to magicspoon.com slash battleship.
You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us in the channel. Thanks for watching.